Hello and welcome back to yet another episode of Divinity Original Sins uh, 2, the uh, definitive edition. My name is Saiken and we're playing on Honor Mode Plus, uh, so um, scaling enemies with two levels above us uh, to make it extra hard, uh, some special buffs and uh, other minor improvements for enemies. Uh, we left off after the first couple of battles and now it's time to uh, defeat Maigo and Magister Yarrow. Again, the uh, uh, the best tactic that I came up with is utilizing high ground. Um, Maigo has a really nasty con uh, contingent, uh, which um, contagion, which will um, spread poison damage and deal quite a hefty amount of it actually. So we want to prevent that from happening. Matter of fact, one of the things that we could do um, is uh, mm, uh, prepare with quite a bit of rain and. Uh, mm, uh, change uh, the water into fire uh, by using contagion uh, and then afterwards uh, burning it uh, down. He is an undead, so all poison based damage uh, will, uh, every single bit of poison based damage will heal him. Uh, in terms of successfully doing uh, this fight, uh, one of the easiest ways uh, for me was always uh, to. Uh, have one person tank them down here, whilst the two others uh, will start hitting them from up here. Again, preparation of the battlefield is uh, the most important uh, topic at the uh, at the beginning. Um, might as well want to use uh, um, uh, blood sacrifice to let them stand on uh, blood right away. The cooldowns will regenerate before we are starting the combat, so both of uh, them have the advantage of standing on blood. Um, Losi here, after she has uh, created so much rain, can start uh, creating her companion. And I'm considering uh, giving her more CC ability now that we have uh, already used the rain. Good. So we're ready to go. Magister Yero has way more um, uh, magical armor than uh, Milo. So we're going to, uh, Milo, we're going to basically. Uh, try to get down his magical um, armor. Can immediately see how con uh, contagion is uh, starting to be a problem. Um, let's try to stay out of battle for now. Ah, shit. Uh, she entered, unfortunately. Okay. What we could do, though, is since he's still out of battle, we could. Normally, you should uh, pre buff. A bit more. It's a difficult fight, uh, so I wouldn't underestimate it. What he could do um, whilst being out of combat is he could pre buff Seville. And I think someone had. No, I must have been mistaken. I was under the impression someone had a scroll of frost armor, which is not the case. Good. So Saiken. Um, easily uh, can enter a combat. Uh, one good way of doing that is pre-buffed, so he's going to uh, he's going to um, haste himself and afterwards we're reducing Maigo's movement speed. Okay, our main tactic will be to reduce Maigo's magical armor as much as possible and somewhat control Magister Yero. She's way more tanky than uh, than him, and she has electric skin as a random buff, as well as fire uh, firebrand. Ah, that's that's going to hurt. Um, none of those buffs will happen in your game. However, the con uh, take in that he has done uh, will definitely happen in your game. So, essentially, 
we're starting to con uh, continue in um, in getting him down. Uh, one thing that you should know about undeads that is quite helpful is oh, is he not undead? Well, it doesn't matter. I, uh, if he was undead. Um, the regeneration actually would have uh, dealt damage to him as well as reduced his armor. Uh, the fact that he isn't under uh, is not a big uh, is not a big deal. Just means we need to be a bit careful. Uh, we haven't really lost anything uh, by giving him regeneration. Okay, uh, because. We first of all need to get rid of his physical and magical armor. Uh, we would want to crowd control them to the best of our abilities. First things first. Might want to... Bull rush in, which hits both of them, and then essentially charge into a safe location uh, hits both of them again uh, plus we're out of uh, range from them um, how should we play that I do have an idea and we have plenty of turns before it's their turn they are nicely clustered up and we might want to really target Milo's, uh, Milo's uh, magical defense. So what we're going to do is... Let's get that extra... Uh, that... Oh, wait, wait, wait. He's going to heal from a poison arrow. Never mind. Never mind, I do have a better idea. We're going to increase physical damage. And we're simply going to wail them down. Uh, Maigo, despite taking down his magical defenses, uh, also it might be wise to take down his physical ones as well so that we can crowd control him. He really deals a lot of damage and I don't want us to be caught in a position where um, he could um, unload his damage potential on us. That would be really, really bad. Uh, Lowsome. Could start uh, summoning uh, physical totems here. Um, and on top of that, I am of the opinion she should slow both of them down for yet another round. So that's helpful, and now it's time to actually unload. So, one, two, three. Very nice. Worked like a charm. My goal is still in a pretty decent condition. We will change that soon. So, High Ground will give us additional bonus. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, there we go. Really solid damage. We downed his physical defenses. Which means we can now... start crowd controlling him. Might as well use the opportunity to heal Ethan just a little bit. And increase everyone's damage by encouraging them.
Good. Time to continue to heal Ethan. And we're now starting to deal damage to Maigo. Position ourselves in such a way that he will have a hard time moving. Use the back step to get a little bit closer and I think... Yep, this here will disarm him, probably rendering him helpless. This here would knock him down. There's a chance for it to... both of, uh, both of the abilities could miss. I think the knockdown is superior. It also clears, uh, clears the area here. So we can walk out of the fire. Good, my goes on the ground. Yeah, that doesn't deal enough damage, but on the other hand, what am I supposed to do? We need to continue to crowd control him. Let's haste Sibyl. And deal some damage to him. Alright, low sir. Summons another totem. Totems are incredibly helpful. And since her wand is doing poison damage, we're going to use it on her. Maigo would be healed instead. Time to self buff our, um, us and time to deal damage to Maigo. It's now down to a 100 hit points. Moving up and making him a chicken. That'll crowd control him for two additional turns. Which is the arrow in the meantime. Continues to take some uh, shots and is slowed down. We're creating another Summoning Infuse it and make sure that Ifan here stops burning Summoning damages my goal And starts hitting her Alright, good enough. So, as for him, Magister unfortunately still has plenty of armor left over. Um, but we, we should be fine. Steal some damage. And this here will trigger an additional attack of opportunity uh, 
which should slow down the Magister even further. Mosquito Swarm gets down Maigo. Let's create another bloated corpse. The fire was too strong, killed the bloated corpse. Alright, Mai goes down. That's a very nice first step. Now it's just a matter of kiting her and dealing enough damage. All right, um, you know what, let's haste ourselves and play it safe. Heal Ethan. Start killing the Magister. Good. Ethan gets some more healing, which means he is definitely going to survive the Spark Strider attacks. And we can kill the Magister. She's down to 30 hit points. Good. Once you're done with that, after the short battle, You finally can loot him. Good part about uh, Maigo is he's always having his breastplate and this is where the strength 11 is going to come in pretty handy. Breastplate in my opinion is a very strong item in the uh, in the early game. Substantial improvement uh, for physical armor. Gives another strength uh, on top of it so really really powerful. On top of it, we're getting uh, Maigo's ring, which will allow our uh, tank to uh, use additional uh, restoration magic. So that's really how you're uh, how you're dealing with Maigo. Um, I recommend uh, uh, dealing with him early in the game. Uh, that way, you're getting the benefits of uh, the ring. Good. Next up for us is going to be the legendary um, crocodile uh, battle, which you will find over here. Um, if you, for whatever reason, take the Red Prince, be aware that there is going to be an ambush uh, here. We're not going to uh, fight through that ambush. Matter of fact, um, since we failed to save Dane here, we're just going to get his cart. Because that's um, going to be required for a later quest. Let me move to the crocodile. Alright, here we are at the crocodiles. Um, the crocodiles are probably one of uh, the most difficult encounters at the beginning. And in many of the honor uh, mode runs that I've seen, I started to cringe because... Many people try to use this ledge here to their advantage, and I can see why. Um, in my perspective, it's one of uh, the biggest mistakes that you could do within that combat. Instead, we're going to use the high ground over here and really very, in a very method uh, methodological uh, way, uh, starting to approach uh, this uh, combat. The difficult portion about the combat is probably that a they are reasonably resistant and b the um, boss crocodile 
um, has the ability to teleport plus all of them can use um, earth magic to kind of make your life miserable um, in order to prevent that from happening we are going to uh, set up uh, with our typical setup essentially creating starting uh, position it's absolutely fine that uh, Ifan has uh, triggered them you can uh, see how they are going to move in and luckily for us Losa stays all the way back here that way we don't have any problem with uh, pre-buffing or summoning in this regard uh, Losa definitely needs to have a summoning uh, going so we're going to not enter combat therefore we're summoning right next to her kind of requires her to get a normal summon but that's fine um, we're going to buff up the incarnate and it's joining the combat as well okay so first things first Need to make sure that uh, we probably uh, buffed as many people as we can. Don't underestimate the uh, the oil here. Uh, it's sealing a lot of damage and it's quite uncomfortable to stand on it because it's also going to slow you down. And the melee attack of the saltwater crocodile is just legendarily strong. So what you want to do... I think I single pulled that one, by the way. <laughs> okay. Um, the other two probably are going to join not sure uh, but we're going to pull the other two as well i want to show you like how the combat is uh, is done entirely and not just single pulling one of uh, them um oops so Losa just entered combat i misclicked unfortunately ivan lost a couple of um couple of action points but that's fine so first things first uh, we can remove it from the turn counter essentially by letting it sleep let's move back in yeah there we go the other crocodiles are also joining that's good that's uh, what I was uh, hoping for and expecting now we do have a high ground position up here but we shouldn't break the sleep so what we're going to do is we are essentially going to remove physical armor uh, from the beasts here there we go physical armor done and this here is the boss one which can teleport. The teleportation is probably the bit that is most annoying. Good. What we are going to do is we are essentially moving up to to here and let's slow both of them down because once they have used the teleportation they are incredibly vulnerable uh, to be kited furthermore we're reducing uh, physical armor of, uh, on all of them just to uh, make it uh, easier to crowd control them. Okay, Losa stays a little bit back. I am fine with her saving some ability points for next turn. That was bad. I wanted to have um, that back for later. An oil keg is valuable. Anyways, um, creating another totem. Uh, 
and let's move up to here Seville requires some more armor and some healing perfect good now that most of their physical uh, physical resistance is gone we might be able to get in Okay, so how do we want to control them? Got to be a little bit careful. We're, we have them in a favorable position because they can't reach us this turn. So I don't want to mess that one up. Um, instead, Let's get rid of uh, let's get rid of his physical armor and just save our ability points because we want to cluster them up and uh, have them stand in a bulk more. Fortification certainly hasn't helped. Good. Again, time to remove all of the physical armor. Gotta control him. You can see the sparks. Uh, the spark strides are hitting us very, very hard. That's not going to happen in in your um, run because you're probably not going to have the upgraded monsters. But it is an actual problem for us. So. What we want to do is we want to get rid of as much physical armor as we possibly can. We've done that. Now it's time to deal with him. We're going to, we're most likely going to uh, crowd control him. So let's start with turning everything into poison. Uh, we can't do that. Sibyl is elsewhere is going to die. Yeah, this here would probably kill her. Mm. I wanted to get the combo off. Anyways, we can still poison this guy over here. And start dealing even more damage. Now. Seville needs armor. And we need to be able to heal her somehow. This here is going to heal her just a tiny bit. Our heal is currently on cooldown. Um, might as well be useful to have another body on the field. So let's get another incarnate up here and slow both of them down as much as possible well that did more than i was expecting
Good. First things first. Healing Sibyl. Secondly, we gotta deal with that crocodile over here. Hmm. Good. That has uh, that has taken care of it. We're going to jump down to this crocodile, backstabbing it, allowing us to essentially Hmm. The Incarnate is going to survive it, allowing us to essentially... I wanted to hit it and knock it down. Uh, probably should have... Um, probably should have used um, the chicken instead. Anyways, so that took care of it. We have a few injured folks. Aoife needs some healing. There we go. And we probably need to deal with the salt walker to a crocodile here sooner than later. Uh, let's keep our one action point. Okay, so. We're going to haste Ethan. That way he can uh, move and control the crocodile even better. And... Let's furthermore get rid of all of his magical defenses as well. Okay, so. Need another totem. And we need to kill this crocodile here as soon as possible. Ivan takes care about uh, this uh, crocodile. Unfortunately, he got slowed down, which means this crocodile is going to get loose for the next turn. We would have uh, chicken, uh, which is exactly what we would need in order to get it down. Unfortunately, I can't, just can't sprint far enough. What we can do though is we can heal everyone just a tiny bit and move up as far as possible. Yeah, that was predi uh, predictable. We couldn't control it. Totally our uh, fault, really.
Let's use the knockdown arrow. That way we do have one additional turn to remediate this action. You can use um, scrolls out of the inventory. In this case... Saiken should be resurrected here. All right, Ifan is again in a tough spot. We've knocked down this crocodile. And we have like one extra turn. To deal with it. Can't push it back onto the ground for one more turn, so we gotta kill it. Uh, we gotta control it now. <laughs> Luckily for us, Saiken is pretty self-sustained, uh, so he can relatively easily heal up. Good. Everything is moving according to plan, with the exception that the crocodile gets a turn. Luckily for it, it wastes its turn, and now it's our turn to continue controlling it. There we go. Critical backstab and GG. So, that was the crocodile fight. It is normally much uh, easier than that, so don't get discouraged by the one death uh, that we had happens. Um, and as a sweet, sweet reward, we got the glass of teleportation, as well as a nice little water wand here uh, that even gives us um, a plus to initiative. So, oh, and we got a shield. Good one on top of it. So we can really use some of the loot. Ibon here takes the shield and essentially doubles his defenses. Um, Losa takes uh, the gloves, giving her more crowd control potential. And we're also giving her the magical wand. Saigon changes to dual wands. So yeah, very rewarding encounter. The probably the best item uh, by far are the teleportation gloves. Uh, we will use them frequently as we continue to go on. Anyways, with that, we are um, 
pretty much summing up uh, episode number four of uh, this uh, 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 walkthrough. And in our next episode, we're going to go through the remaining quests. Um, I thank you for watching. And as always, if you enjoyed the content, leave a comment down below um, and hit the like button. Thank you and see you in the next run. Bye bye.